Hi everyone, it's Gina Kay from Gina Kay Designs and I'm so excited to be here on the Ellen Hudson blog and YouTube channel. Many of you have already tried my wreath builder templates and today I'm going to show you a couple of card projects using the brand new Essentials by Ellen release along with the Gina Kay Designs wreath builder templates and a couple of our best selling wreath builder sets. Now, if you've never used the wreath builder before, inside the package there are two templates. Now, here's a little tip. Make sure that you tape down your foam mat on your Misty. A lot of times, if things don't line up perfectly when you restamp, it's because the mat shifted. So if you tape it down, it keeps it securely in place. Then you're going to take one of the templates and you're going to tape it down with some purple tape. Purple tape is a great way to tape this template down because it leaves no residue behind. Now there are two different size templates. There's a three and three quarter inch template and a four inch. Today we're using the three and three quarter inch template. I also have a piece of cardstock here cut to three and three quarter inch square. I'm going to slip that into the template and then I'm going to begin making my first wreath. I'm going to use this adorable everyday doodle stamp set by Essentials by Ellen. And this was drawn by Julie Ebersol, who is one of my favorite people in the world. I just love this set. And you can see I placed that stamp off to the right hand side and picked it up with the door of the Misty. You always want to make sure your cardstock is back in place. I'm going to ink this up with some Gina K Designs Black Onyx ink and I'm going to stamp it. Then I'm going to turn the piece of cardstock to the next position in the template. I'm going to ink up that stamp again and I'm going to stamp it again. And I'm going to continue to do this going all the way around until I have eight evenly spaced images and these images will be perfectly centered in the middle of that cardstock. So to save time since you guys know you're just going to turn and stamp, I'm just going to speed this part up a little bit and get right to the end so that you can see what that finished wreath looks like. So there is the first image for the finished wreath. Now I'm going to use my tidy towel to clean off that stamp. The tidy towel is a great way to clean your stamps. Uh, it's lint free and it cleans with just water. So I'm going to use the solid image that coordinates with this flower. And what I love so much about this set is that they're a little off center, a little off kilter. So it's real doodly and it looks almost a little watercolor like. I just love how they work together. Now for this card, I'm going to make a rainbow. So I'm going to start with some red velvet ink and I'm going to stamp that image. And then I'm going to clean the image with the tidy towel again because I want to make sure all that ink is gone before I go to my next color. Now I'm going to turn the cardstock to the next position in the template. And then I'm going to use some tangerine twist. All of these ink cubes are available in all of the Gina K Designs colors. And Ellen carries our ink cubes. She carries our ink cube sets and she carries lots of fun Gina K design stamp sets and other products, including the tidy towel. The next color I'm going to use is the wild dandelion and I'm going to continue to do a rainbow all around this wreath. So I'm going to speed this up a bit and you can see I've used red velvet, tangerine twist, wild dandelion, jelly bean green, turquoise sea, blue raspberry, wild lilac, and there is passionate pink. So now I have my rainbow of flowers all done. Now this stamp set is called Reasons to Celebrate and it's got congratulations on your and then you can choose all kinds of different things to put with that. This is a great stamp set if you don't want to have a whole stamp set for retirement or a whole stamp set for graduation, but you need those words to complete a once in a while card project. There's also little elements in this stamp set that work perfectly with the wreath builder and it is a wreath builder designed set. So I'm going to start with congratulations on your and I'm going to stamp that using the black onyx ink. Now I can choose whatever greeting I want to put with that. 
And for this card, I've decided to make a graduation card. I wanted to do something a little bit different than the traditional graduation cap. And I think these little square cards are the perfect kinds of cards to add a gift card inside. So that's a graduation card going to some young lady that I know who's graduating very soon. For my next card project, I'm going to use the apple image and then I'm going to fill it in with the solid apple image. To start, I'm going to lay this image on the side of my cardstock, on the right hand side, very close to the edge, and then I'm going to pick it up with the door of the Misty. It's always a good idea to readjust that cardstock because you want to make sure that that first image stamps in the right place. Then I'm going to ink it up with some black onyx ink and I'm going to continue to turn and stamp until I have eight evenly spaced apple images. Now with this type of stamp where it's a two-step stamp you can also do a tone on tone look where you can stamp the line in a darker version of whatever color you're going to fill it in with. But I really like the black lines on the outside because it really makes it look like a doodle. So now for my second image, I'm going to use that solid image from the doodle stamp set, the Everyday Doodle stamp set. And I'm going to stamp this one in some red velvet ink. So I'm going to lay that right on top of the same apple that I started with and I'm going to pick it up with the door of the Misty. Now I'm going to use red velvet once again and my cardstock is going to be red velvet as well. I like that matching cardstock and ink look. So I'm going to continue to ink this up and go all the way around the entire perimeter of this card until all of the apples are filled in. Some of you may not know that May is Teacher Appreciation Month and we're also looking at the end of the school year. So if, you, if your kids aren't in school anymore, you may still have some teacher friends and it's great to send them a card thanking them for what they do for the next generation coming up. So I'm using G24 Copic marker just to fill in the little leaves and stems and you can use any green, you can use any kind of marker for this. I'm not doing any particular shading technique, just coloring them in. Well, now I'm going to cut this piece of cardstock in half. So the measurement for that is one and seven eighths of an inch. That's half of the three and three quarter inch panel. And I'm going to turn this square wreath into an A2 size card. So I'm going to tape the one panel down at the bottom of this black piece of cardstock. And I'm going to tape the other one at the top. Now my cardstock, my white cardstock was three and three quarter inches square. So this black piece is three and seven eighths of an inch by five and one eighth of an inch. And then that whole panel is going to go on my red velvet card base. Now I made a little decorative strip here and I embossed that with a Swiss dot cuddlebug embossing folder, but you can use any embossing folder and there's so many beautiful ones out there. I just happen to have that one close by and I'm going to put that right across that raw edge and then just press that down and that covers up all of that gap in between and it makes it look like an oval wreath. Now to stamp my greeting, I'm going to put a little bit of the Gina K Designs dot adhesive runner on the back of that white circle. And that white circle was cut out using the ThermoWeb small circle dies. I'm going to use the teacher greeting from this set. And I'm going to stamp it up toward the top of the circle, leaving a little bit of space at the bottom so I can stamp some tiny apples on there. I'm going to use black onyx to stamp this and then once it's stamped I'm going to hand stamp a few of the little apples from that set. And again this is the Reasons to Celebrate set by Gina K Designs and it mixes and matches so well with so many of your other stamp sets. 
So I'm going to use the little apple image and I'm going to stamp one in the middle. I like to start in the middle and then I'm going to stamp one on either side. If I start on the right or the left, sometimes it doesn't look as centered. Now I'm going to color these apples in by using Copic marker R46 for the red. And again, I'm not doing any particular kind of shading or anything else like that. So I could have used a colored pencil. I could have used a water-based marker. I could have used Sharpies, any kind of coloring tool that you want. And if you are the, the artist who likes to do the shading, then by all means, shade away. Now I'm going to use the G24 again to color in the little tiny leaves of those apples so everything coordinates beautifully. Then I'm going to use the large circles dies and I've cut one out in black. And you can also see that leaves no residue behind on your mat. That's the Gina K Designs adhesive dot runner. So that is the large circle and I mounted those two pieces together and then mounted it on my card using some of the ThermoWeb foam squares. Now I did decorate the inside of this card and I used the Everyday Punnies stamp set. I absolutely love this stamp set. It goes so well with the Everyday Doodles and it's got cute, fun, quippy greetings in there. And the one that I chose was, you are absolutely awesome and then I stamped one of the apples inside to match. So that's a fun way to decorate the inside and have a cute punny greeting. For my final card project, I'm going to use these leaves from the Everyday Doodle stamp set, and then I'm gonna fill them in with those solid leaves. So I have one placed exactly where I want it, and then I'm going to reposition that cardstock into my template. I'm going to stamp this again with black onyx ink. And again, if I wanted a more tone on tone look, because I'm filling these in with jelly bean green ink, I could use my fresh asparagus ink for the tone on tone. But because these are doodles, I just really love that pop of black. So now that is all stamped and you have the perfect beginnings of a wreath. Now I'm going to stamp the inside images of these leaves. And I love this little stamp because it looks like two little coffee beans too. And I was looking at the coffee cup in that doodle set and I was thinking, hmm, I think I have to do something with that and turn these little insides of these leaves into coffee beans for a background. Julie did such a great job on these sets. I just love them. So I'm gonna stamp my last one here and then it's time to add a flower. Now the flower in the Everyday Doodles is a little too big, so I have the original Wreath Builder stamp set, and this one is perfect for all kinds of wreaths, and was the original design. It was designed to go with the templates, so you can make all kinds of wreaths using this stamp set. I'm going to take the big flower here and that tiny little star flower, and I'm going to add flowers all around these leaves. So I'm going to position this flower exactly where I want it so it kind of sneaks right in there between those leaves. And then I'm gonna stamp my flowers using some Passionate Pink ink. And I really like the way these leaves mix with the original Wreath Builder stamp set. It gives you an opportunity to do some two-step stamping and some coloring if you'd rather color the leaves in but the leaves are, seem to be the perfect size to coordinate with some of the bigger flowers in the original wreath builder. So once I did all of these flowers, I looked at the card and I thought I'd still like a pop of black in the flowers to coordinate with the leaves. So here I have this tiny star flower from the original wreath builder set. It's one of my favorite images in the set. And I'm going to put it just on an acrylic block and use some black onyx ink. And I'm going to stamp right over the center of those passionate pink flowers. And that just gives a fun look to the center of each flower. And it brings the black into the flower. Here's a closer view. And you can see it's pretty easy to see through the block and nail them straight on. 
And I think that really pulls the whole look of the wreath together. So now it's time to add a greeting and of course I went right back to that everyday punny stamp set and I found a really nice greeting here because I need to make an encouragement card for a friend. So I love this, the Bob Marley, every little thing is going to be all right. And I stamped that image and you can see that there, but I left enough space at the top to add one of my new uh, word dies and this is the word smile. This is a brand new release at Gina K Designs and I'm going to use some of the Connect glue. Now to speed things up a bit, I've already pre-cut three of the smile words and I cut them out of jelly bean green ink to coordinate with the inside of the leaves. Now what I like to do, and I learned this from my friend Jennifer McGuire, I love to use the Connect glue to glue these pieces together and thicken up the greeting. It makes it look more like um, a 3D embellishment this way. And they're so easy to do. In fact, sometimes when I don't have any mojo, I'll just cut tons of words and glue them together and I keep them in a little box so when I need a quick die cut piece, they're all ready to go. Now the Connect Glue is forgiving and it allows you time to kind of line things up before you press them down and make them permanent. And you can see I work from one side of the die all the way over, making sure that they're all straight. Now I'm going to do it one more time and then I have all three letters or all three panels of the smile glued together. And then I'm going to use the Connect Glue to glue it down onto the card. Now if you've never tried the Connect Glue, I think you'll really like it. You can get tiny dots out. You can see how fast I'm going. That is not sped up at all. That's actually how fast I'm gluing. And the little dots come out so tiny. But you can get thicker dots too if you just squeeze a little harder. The other thing I love about the Connect Glue is it goes on white but it dries completely clear and it doesn't dry with much of a shine. So if you want to reposition it a little bit like I do here on the card, I think I push it down just a bit there and some of that glue might be showing but once it dries it'll dry matte and you can't even see it. And then instead of trying to glue all the little dots together to dot the eye, I just used a cute little rhinestone. And you can use a rhinestone, a sequin, an enamel dot, whatever you want. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I hope you'll give some of these wreath builder cards a try. And a big thanks to Ellen Hudson for inviting me onto her channel today. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.